joined by Philip Manduka, head of investments at ECU Group. Welcome. Thanks very much for coming in to speak to us. So really, a trend that we've seen amongst all the banks in earnings season so far has been that profits are up, bad loans are down. Yeah, they are. Um, but growth isn't there, is it? And the corporates are, are hoarding this cash, which everyone wants to know when they're going to spend it. And they aren't going to spend it. Why would they spend it? Um, there's nothing to spend it for because consumers are tapped out. And this is the, the big story out there right now, that what used to be not too hot, not too cold in terms of growth was wonderful uh, for everyone. Well, actually, it's not wonderful anymore. Instead of the Goldilocks environment, we've got a sort of Cooleylocks environment where it just isn't going to be quite good enough to get either more monetary ease or more monetary tightening. And what's going to happen as a consequence, I think, over the course of the next month or two, is that equities will start to drift off because that growth just is not creating the necessary kind of repercussions in the economy and specifically uh, in employment to generate consumer confidence through spending. And housing isn't helping either on both sides of the Atlantic. So that's interesting. You're saying that despite of the fairly positive earnings season that we've seen so far, that the economic fundamentals are not there because we seem to be seeing this tug of war between mixed, if not disappointing, economic data coming out of the US and then, and then fairly positive earnings. So you think that the fundamentals will win out? Well, you've got a real problem coming in Europe, for starters, which is, you know, we've had a lot of noise and a lot of rhetoric about cuts, budget cuts and fiscal cuts and contractual austerity uh, measures and so on. But actually, Actually, they haven't happened. Uh, they haven't really happened and haven't really bit. And I, I will tell you now that I think that without any question of doubt, when they do start to bite in the fourth quarter, you're going to see some real squeals of pain from socialist Europe that are going to begin to question the um, uh, me metal of the governments to, to implement. And of course, when it comes to the UK, you've got a whole different problem, which is that this coalition government mm. is going to start cracking at the seams. It won't break up. But political risk will re-enter the equation for Sterling come September, October. The Lib Dems have to stand up. They're the forgotten party at the moment. will have to stand up and pretend that they are fighting these cuts. But whether the cuts can be implemented or not will become a big question for Sterling. And I do therefore think that the dollar, with its better growth story than Europe, even now, despite the fact that the dollar has been mm. weaker recently, uh, is going to be a better currency to play in than Euro or Sterling in that fourth quarter. So political and economic uncertainties ahead. How do you make money in this environment? Well, I think you should be picking up some dollars at this point in time against sterling and against the euro. Uh, I particularly think that the yen remains a key play for FX at the moment. Uh, and it goes back to interest rates. The yen and interest rates have a very strong correlation. I expect the yen to be strengthening. Why? Let's take a benchmark of the 10-year Treasury. 295 seems as a yield seems very low to a lot of people. But in the new environment we have of this coolie locks type economy, 295 may be very high. Remember, 10 year Japan yields have just broken one. Uh, and if we are going to get that kind of economic growth, i.e., low, with very low inflation, maybe some disinflation, deflation threat to come, then 295 could be too high and we could be on our way down to 250 or even two and a quarter. And the Fed, in my opinion, will be helping that come the fourth quarter with more QE because it has ramifications for the U.S. housing market, which is cu crucial for U.S. consumer confidence. Right, so talk to me some more then about your investment strategy. Where else are you putting your money? Well, my problem right now is I'm a very big bull and a very well-known big bull of gold. and I don't see QE coming right on cue. Uh, I think QE will be deferred for a month or two longer than the market is currently anticipating, which is one of the reasons you could expect more of a dollar bounce. The mm. Fed won't move with, with uh, uh, the S&P, for example, above 1,100. It doesn't need to, and it won't use bullets where it doesn't need to. It'll wait. I see equities drifting back down, forcing the Fed in the fourth quarter to go, at which time you really do want to be long of gold. So gold stands at a risk of a correction short term here, at a risk. I'm not betting on it. I wouldn't be short, but it stands at a risk of it. Elsewhere, I like the yen and I like U.S. yields lower. Good stuff. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate uh, your thoughts.